Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Happy Holy Spirit Day! <laughs> and happy confirmation. It is an exciting day in the life of Peace Lutheran Church and in the life of the Kingdom of God. Today we celebrate with David and Arwen as they have completed their catechetical, this portion. They've completed this portion of their catechetical studies um, and have expressed a desire to indeed affirm their baptisms before all of you today, um, to want to continue in the life of faith and in the life of God's people, um, and they are ready to take more responsibility for themselves in that. So it is an exciting day and um, one that I can't help but think back always on Confirmation Day um, to the day I was confirmed. Um, in our church here, there has apparently been a tradition of, of uh, the confirmands standing up and giving a speech in front of everybody, um, answering, you know, what is, what is, who is God to them, and uh, naming a Bible, Bible verse, uh, among other things. Um, this year, we have had a class of kids that are very much more um, shy, if you will, um, and so um, speaking um, didn't seem like maybe the appropriate thing, so we've printed out for you their personal faith statements and their thank yous, so I hope you will read them that came after conversation and discussion, and it is their own statement of faith for where they are at this moment in their journey, and certainly it's just a brief statement of the things that uh, we've heard them express over their time of, of studies. Um, Arwen and David, I have to say, you're getting off a bit light. <laughs> when I was confirmed, the bishop showed up to every confirmation. I was a Catholic. The bishop came to every confirmation and would quiz the confirmant on the spot. You never knew who he was gonna call on or what he was gonna ask. And so we always sat there, please don't call on me, please don't call on me, please don't call on me, please don't, and so it was always like, don't look in his direction, don't make eye contact, no, don't make eye contact. Don't, don't look like you're ignoring him, but, but you know. And so the year that I was confirmed, my confirmation name, because we chose a saint as our confirmation name, I chose Saint Rose of Lima. And one of the things that we had to do, of course, was we had to study about that saint and we had to write a report about that saint. And, um, and so as I was sitting there and the bishop was you know, calling on different people, pointing, just randomly pointing to people, the next thing I knew he said was, because he was talking about the different saints' names that people had chosen. Oh, so many chose Elizabeth, and so many chose Mary, and you know, all the, the normal names. And he says, but we have some among you who chose saints with flower names. And I was like, oh no! How many could there be? Thankfully, I did not get called on, <laughs> right? Um, but what a day, right? A day indeed for us to ponder with these young people who God is to us. Who do we believe God to be as creator 
as, as, as redeemer, as sanctifier, as father, as son, as Holy Spirit. Who is this God? What do we believe about this God? And how would we express it if we put it in our own terms? And of course, Arwen, bright mind that she is, the other night as we were um, cleaning up after our final confirmation session, turns to me and says, well, Pastor Krista, what do you believe, who do you believe God is? Who is the, the, the Father, who is the Son, who is the Holy Spirit to you? Well, thanks, Arwen. <laughs> Um, but no, I had to sit there for a moment and try to take everything that God is to me and find just those few words, right, for that moment in time. And so I'm inviting you into that journey this confirmation season and this Pentecost as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit that is with us. We celebrate that with the Holy Spirit comes an abundance of gifts poured out, gifts of faith, gifts of healing, gifts of, of service, gifts of, of hope, and gifts of administration, all kinds of gifts that, that God has given us for the work that God calls us to in his name. Right? That indeed, God doesn't leave us alone. That God doesn't call us but God also enlightens us and empowers us with these gifts and then gathers us together in communities of faith so that we can find the ways that our gifts can work together for the common good. Arwen and, and, and David, what have we been talking a lot about these last few weeks about with your parents and kind of the baton being passed on, right? Right? Your parents at your baptisms made promises on your behalf. And the, part of the reason they brought you to confirmation and made you do this every week and every month that you committed to was because they were being faithful to the promises they made at the baptismal font. Promises to teach you how to pray, promises to teach you the creeds of the church and the Lord's Prayer, to teach you the Ten Commandments, promises to, to bring you to the Lord's Supper, to help you learn the Holy Scriptures, right? And there are places in their life where they, even though that's their responsibility, they knew they needed help with that, and they turned to the church, and the church comes alongside of parents and helps them keep those baptismal promises so they can be faithful to their word, Right? But now you're standing up on your own and saying, thank you, mom and dad, for the promises you made, for bringing me here, and now I know it's my turn to step out and run the next leg of the race. Right? Knowing that you're behind me and cheering me on there when I need you, but this race is mine to run. This faith is mine to live. But there will be times when you will feel like you don't have the right gifts to handle the situations you will find yourself in. And that's okay, because when you remain part of God's church and part of God's people, that means you have others who may have the gifts that you need, and working together with them you can accomplish so much more than trying to do something or figure out something or handle something on your own. That's what it means for all of us to have the gift of the promise of this advocate in today's scripture. This advocate that Jesus promises to send after Jesus returns to the Father. I will send this advocate to you this, this spirit of truth, right? This one who will speak not what they want to speak, but will speak what I give them to speak. And what I give them to speak is what I even hear from my Father, right? This one, this advocate, is, is to be the very presence of Jesus with us after Jesus ascends to heaven. 
Jesus with us without flesh, even as Jesus with flesh lives and dwells with God in the glories of God's kingdom. It's a promise that we are never alone. That you don't run this race by yourself. But that there will be times in your life that you'll face something you don't think you can do, and then lo and behold, you can do it, and wow, people will say, did that come out of you? Right? Just like those disciples on that first Pentecost, one second, they couldn't speak anything but Galilean. And then, blam, the Holy Spirit shows up with a sound of rushing wind and these tongues of fire, right? Could could you imagine? Let's be honest with ourselves. If we were sitting here today and all of a sudden the sound of a rushing wind filled this space and we began to see these tongues of flame coming out of the air and alighting on us, how many of us would probably walk away thinking, I need to change my pants? (laughs) We would probably be so afraid because it's not anything we would expect. And that's how the Holy Spirit tends to work, my friends. Just when you least expect it, boom! They show up and they give you power. Power to do things in the name of Christ that you wouldn't think you were capable of doing. Like forgiving people who've hurt you. Of telling the truth in tough times, even if it means getting yourself disciplined. Of standing up for what's true and what's right, even if the rest of the world around you seems to be going crazy. Even if you are alone in it, you really aren't. Because the Holy Spirit is with you. And the promise of the Holy Spirit is that when you are part of the church, we are with you too. We are with you. So indeed, this is a day to celebrate and rejoice. A day that you step forward and that the Holy Spirit shows up even more to bless you, and to continue this journey with you that started at a baptismal font, whether it was this one or another kind of like it, right? That ultimately was what your parents did for you in, comfort, in, in baptism, in bringing you to God. They gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit who's already with you and now is just waiting for more room to shine even more brightly in your lives so that the light of your good works and your love in this world, people will see and go, wow, God is real. God is real because I see God in Arwen and I see God in David, right? May indeed the Holy Spirit blaze within you through your life. May it give you passion for for loving and serving and doing good things in this world and for continuing to grow in your love for Christ and in your love for God's church and God's world. So indeed, God bless you this day and all of us as we consider indeed for ourselves, who is this God? And what are we capable of with this power of the Holy Spirit in us? Thanks be to God. Amen.